we think of history, most of us anyway, as old buildings and old books. We go to a place like Europe, we see a cathedral, and we think, wow, there are thousands of years of history there because we recognize it. We know how to go up to it and touch the stone and see the hundreds of years of stories there. We know what it means when we go inside that door. Edmonton, on the other hand, we think of as a place where we don't have much built history. We've all said this, right? Oh, there's no history here. So I want to persuade you today that there are, in fact, thousands of years of stories here. And I want to give you some tools on how to recognize them, some places you can go to look for them. So I'm going to start with some stories from my podcast, Let's Find Out. Each episode, people give me questions about local history, and then we find out the answers together. And I try to teach them a little bit about how they can do research, how they can find out the answers to their own questions. And some questions, it is easy to find the answer in a building or a document. Like Christy Bolter here, she wanted me to help her find out the story of the building that she lives in, this house that it was actually pretty easy to research written stories about it because it was built by a mayor of Strathcona. So if you go to the Alberta Cultural Archives at St. Stephen's College, there's a whole box of documents about it, pictures and photographs. And some people's questions are a little harder to answer. Nathan Smith gave me a question about the indigenous history on this land. He wanted to know how people have been living here. And specifically, he asked me to help him find out how indigenous people have traditionally been um, connected to food plants in this region. So our journey started with talking to Jody Stonehouse, who you're going to meet a little bit later this evening, <laughs> learning about how different indigenous groups think about history in this land. And she encouraged us and prepped us to talk to an elder. And this was a story that we discovered the best way to find out the answer to it was to actually meet somebody, learn how to offer protocol, learn how to buy tobacco and when to offer it. And um, it was a story that we learned the answer to in his living room by talking to him. He said one thing that I really loved, which was that our history is written in natural relationships. And that's something that I think I've found in some other podcast episodes as well. Like this one where I was trying to dig into the snow goose chase. So it's this wonderful event that happens every April near Toefield, which is kind of southeast of the city. You get on a school bus and you zoom around between farmer's fields into wetland type areas and you look in those ponds for migratory birds, especially geese. It's really fun, but I heard this story that it used to be called the Snow Goose Festival. And there used to be thousands of people who would come to the town of Toefield for this big carnival type event. And I wondered, how did it go from being that to being this kind of madcap, madcap chase on a school bus? So it turns out that the answer to that question wasn't written in a plaque or a monument. It was written in the land. So that festival used to be based on Beaver Hill Lake, where thousands of geese would land. And this is what Beaver Hill Lake looks like today. The festival ended because the lake disappeared. If you go there now, it's mostly grass and cattle. So that was a story that we could only find out by learning about the land. And that actually is something that's borne out inside Edmonton City Limits, too. This is an archaeologist that I met for another episode, Hayden Stewart, who is showing me some of the sites where early settlers used to live in the early 1900s in Mill Creek Ravine. And he was showing me that these trees, these Carragana big bushes, they're planted in these kind of linear patterns because people were given them to break the land. Our stories are also written in place names. So we have a neighborhood named Oliver, named after this guy, Frank Oliver, who you may or may not know, um, was a minister of immigration federally and was responsible for some policies that allowed the federal government to explicitly ban people based on their race if he thought they were unsuitable for Canada. This is a map of the Pappas Chase Cree Reserve that was demarked for the Pappas Chase ban in Edmonton. Frank Oliver was personally involved in trying to prevent them from getting this land because he said the land could be used by better men. And then when the reserve was created, he was involved in dispossessing them of it. I can't think of a bolder statement about Edmonton's past than the dishonorable <laughs> name that we've given to a neighborhood. That's a story right there. <laughs> but these stories aren't just accidents. They're foundational to how we relate to the land. Because if we want to plow over the prairie with wheat and grass, if we want to put up our gas stations and houses and malls, wherever we want, and feel like there are no consequences, we have to believe that the land was empty before we came here. So we have to 
sort of pick away at that story. You know, this story doesn't always serve us either. Sometimes it gives us this inferiority complex. You know, we go to a place like Amsterdam and we see this beautiful building, the Rijksmuseum, that obviously has hundreds of years of history that we know how to recognize. And we feel this weird inferiority relationship to it that's not healthy. You know, we can feel lonely and isolated and unrooted in the place where we live. We live in a place where there are active dinosaur digs inside our city limits. This land is full of stories. I want you to repeat back to me. This land is full of stories. This land is full of stories. So, where do we go for look, to look for them? Well, you could take a bird walk. Um, you could go out with the Edmonton Nature Club, learn about the animals that live in this land, but also ask them questions about our relationship to them. Not just what other animals do we share this land with, but how do we relate to them? When did they arrive here? How have we shaped what animals are here? You can also go to one of the medicine walks that the U of A Faculty of Extension is planning this summer. You can go to the Amiskwichi History Series. You can go to one of the powwows happening around Alberta this summer. Meet some indigenous folks. Build some relationships and start to learn about the thousands of years of history here by talking to people. We have so much to gain. A sense of place, a sense of purpose, a sense of belonging on the land we stand on. Thank you. <laughs>